Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a uh, coaching video for the daily trade from October 21st, 2015. Uh, started off with Rid1 showing, I think, some professional analysis of his own uh, trades in TNA today with the trade log, and then a careful uh, reflective learning entries about uh, things he did right, things he felt he did wrong, areas that he could improve, and then some specific questions that um, he, he uh, would like to get some help with, and I responded to him in the chat room. Um, specifically, he's uh, his first trade, uh, he's looking to go long on TNA. This is on uh, three-minute charts, TNA. This is the five-minute chart for reference. You can see it looks a little bit easier to see. Uh, a little smoother action on the five minutes. Um, he goes long here. I have no problem with that. The only concern I have is we've got one good leg up. Um, but I still like the entry. I like the tight stop here and the protection, protective stop. Uh, it's uh, feasible to go short here, but I generally don't like to uh, because of the rising river. What I would much rather do is look for uh, support to have been found here and then play the second leg up. Uh, so I don't uh, uh, worry about missing that potential move down because I would typically have a long side bias because of the upward slope of the river. Uh, this, uh, this entry here uh, where he's uh, going long though is one where I actually would like to go short because you can see we have the 10 period regression line comes up tests through the dragon. We have price fail at the Bollinger Band mean and then when uh, the 10 has come out of the uh, out of the dragon and uh, price has left the uh, dragon. This is actually the ideal uh, entry to go short and then the size of this move down is uh, parallel to or symmetrical with this this move down and also with this move up. So you have one leg up one leg down. Failure short of the Bollinger Band. I mean this is technically a P1F uh, and then your short is right in this location here with the stop right here you can see that you get a nice trade. Now after one big up and two big legs down and an RLCO outside of the river and we've had uh, a couple uh, trades already out here around uh, Z minus two and a half uh, and then after the lunch break uh, the counter trend rally here I don't have a problem uh, with this uh, long with a stop here. Uh, maybe we could get a tighter stop in here but um, you know on a one two three exit somewhere in here but I don't mind this uh, at this location here uh, based on other market conditions and maybe looking at the VIX with this much time left in the day uh, this is a potential uh, short uh, but I don't have any problem in the lunchtime just trimming that uh, and now what we see is a double bottom um, if he if he does go short here then there is probably uh, this failure to fail in here results in a fractional uh, loss uh, or a stop and reverse at this green dot. Um, uh, I really like this entry. This is an RLCO entry in here. Maybe you can get this. I don't have a problem with this uh, as it breaks out of the river. That's fine. You have um, uh, price, you have the 30 period leaving the river right here. This is the beginning of trending behavior. This is an excellent trade. Notice you've got a Z3 favorable move and then about uh, uh, almost 20 minutes of sideways, uh, no further follow through. You have the dragon leaving the river. Uh, I would like to see an exit somewhere in here uh, after the RLCO and then capturing this gain. I think it stays a little bit too long. This actually, if there's more time left in the day, this could be short. But um, uh, So I think there was more to be had out of this one with a little tight, uh, tighter stop, especially uh, with only an hour left in the trading session. We're about half an hour left right here. I think uh, we got to do more to capture that gain. Uh, I like the details in the log sheet. I would start adding uh, some trade journal comments. Uh, this is Joey looking at um, XIV. Uh, he's he is getting some measured moves with the a little maybe a little late on the RLXD, but uh, I don't mind this entry here with the stop down here. Uh, capturing this uh, move before it becomes a uh, further loss. I like locking in the gain. I love the re-entry when the 10 uh, finds support at the edge of the dragon, which is on the edge of the river. Um, uh, I don't mind this exit here and locking in another piece for 0.76R. 
uh, asked for an excursion all the way up to Z plus 3. Um, you find support. Now, note this is almost a pattern 4 plus an RLCO. Maybe we could get a little earlier entry in here, but I, I, I still like this entry. You have a swing low in the Dragon, a higher low, uh, found support north of the RL270. Uh, I like this entry. Maybe premature on the exit, depending on where in this pattern it uh, gets stopped down. But still, that's pretty nice. Um, when the Dragon rolls over and the 10 leaves the river, there's a, there's a potential certainly for this leg, and then absolutely this move here. This is a, uh, a critical sh uh, potential short entry because we have a great big move down that negates all of this price action, hits a new low of the day. Uh, price fails at the edge of the river and starts to roll over as the Dragon is already at an extreme. Uh, and so this is a really nice entry here, about 32.13, and there's a potential for about 40, almost 50 cents in that next 30-minute uh, move, uh, just going into the lunch period. So I think we've got to pay attention to this, um, to this price action here and get this second leg. Uh, this is Patrick on uh, TLT, uh, looking for a short on the rejection here. Uh, covers in here, maybe a little tighter on uh, a 1, 2, 3 entry, in the, but I love the stop and reverse. Uh, I think we can do better on this uh, on this exit here, especially if we want to buy back some of this and get, get green for the day. Uh, I don't mind an exit here and then maybe an attempted re-entry that stops here, but um, Still, uh, I you know give that a, a B score on uh, on technique. That's pretty good. Uh, beautiful trade here from Catherine. Notice the first leg down. Find it gets rejected at the uh, just north of the Bollinger Band mean, and the uh, this looks maybe like a VWAP, uh, and certainly rejected at the RL270, and she gets this short uh, with the stop above um, the swing high at the top of the river. Then she makes a beautiful exit uh, right here and captures that which is available after uh, a very nice uh, measured move down. Well done, Catherine. Um, this is Mark just uh, crushing it in Apple with the ready fire aim technique. You can see even without the um, the RLCO patterns that we've got a sideways quiet channel. We have the first move up. It finds support at a higher low and Mark gets a one two three entry just above the real body. Um, love this entry. Uh, excellent stop and then gets the measured move uh, for 2.6 R uh, extremely well done. Uh, this is Bill uh, playing a reversion to the mean trade. He gets the 1, 2, 3 entry short after an almost a Z3 favorable move. Uh, buys here and now you notice the dragon is extended. A reversion back to the mean is absolutely normal after a condition like that. So getting the short probably in here. Uh, and then covering on a one, two, three uh, at this location is an excellent measured move. Well done. Uh, Patrick just showing how it's supposed to look uh, with a double bottom with the VIX, uh, buys the RLXD with a very tight stop, manages his, uh, his stop. It's even a little more aggressive than the piece are once he starts locking in pieces. Uh, I like this patience here holding at the edge of the dragon. The RL10 never really fails in here, so this is okay to hold with a stop here. You've locked, already locked in uh, at least half an hour. Uh, and then you get the second excursion uh, and then gets a uh, terrific uh, uh, second leg up and cashes 1.25R. Um, this is Charles uh, doing some work on some uh, emotional balance uh, after uh, a slight change in his rules and he didn't like the first day and he was uh, fighting himself and so um, he had described his own actions as amateurish, undeveloped, and immature, and so my question was, what is the feeling that arises when he completes that characterization? And I'm concerned or, or interested in this idea about uh, of a goal of being unbiased in our uh, in our thinking, uh, and I'm not sure primate minds can be unbiased. I think we can learn to identify them and account for them and leverage them where they make sense and protect against them where it puts us in a blind spot. So I really want to examine this goal of being unbiased in terms of being realistic or not. And I use the word primate specifically because it communicates important ideas about the biological construct that we're working with, that, that we're issued not a 
perfect computing machine, but a rational uh, biological organ in our head that's been shaped by evolution and has certain characteristics. Unbiased is not normally one of them. So I wanted to explore the feelings that arise out of that. And now if the goal is to be establishing a professional mindset, how do we create that? And in my judgment, this um, deviation from our desired norm and then reacting to it and then taking action on it uh, carefully and systematically uh, and routinely is something I think that creates that professional mindset in the same way that samurai swords get heated, uh, pounded into shape, reheated and, uh, and continuously worked. Uh, no shortcuts to that. There's only the way to do it. Um, the metaphor of the scientist is another powerful one that resonates with Charles. And so uh, we've made great progress in adopting that mindset with the approach to trading and documenting results. And so this is just one of those moments that, hey, it's a long, hard road, and sometimes we get blisters, and we just got to work through it in the way that we do that. And this is what that looks like, is that we've got to learn to be able to operate even when we're not at perfectly emotionally centered, which is an ideal state and not a natural or normal state. It's one that we can approach and one we can get better at, but we can't get down on ourselves when we act the way humans act. So we have to find ways to act in a way that are systematically effective compared to uh, the rest of the herd animals. Uh, and so that's essentially what this, uh, this reflective learning entry is about and will be the subject for <coughs> additional discussions in our coaching. So uh, that's a quick look at the work in the chat room today. Well done to the gang. Um, I admire their courage for being uh, willing to reveal them themselves and their activities in hopes of getting better in public. I think that's a sign of emotional maturity and strength, which is what we need uh, in this very difficult business. So this is Ken Law from Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.